Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson will discuss XML namespaces. XML is used to create new kinds of web documents, and there are a number of different ways you might go about this. One way might be to simply create your own new set of elements and make a new document type out of those, or you might take element sets from different existing document types and combine them. This gives you a lot of flexibility without having to come up with a whole lot on your own, but it does lead to the potential for conflict, especially if you have elements with similar names. The way that we avoid this when we're combining XML documents is through something called namespaces. In this lesson, we'll take a look at what namespaces are, and we'll take a look at a brief example of creating a new XML document out of two different existing XML document types using namespaces. Namespaces are a means of identifying collections of reserved words for particular XML document types so that they can be combined with other markup without fear of conflict between ident identically named elements. Let's start by looking at some of the concepts behind XML namespaces. Let's take a look at some web page code here. This is um, XHTML. And it's a pretty basic web page. We've got our head element, our body element, and in the body we've got a table. The table, the table has two rows. And the rows each contain two data cells. And we just put some text in each of the data cells so that we can see them on screen. If we look at them in a browser, the browser realizes that we are laying out tabular data, which is what the table element is for in HTML. And so it puts one row above the other and lays out all the data according to the way it would look if it were in a table. Now let's say that we have another type of XML document. Let's say we have something that represents a furniture collection. You can have a document type declaration up here with a DTD. Our root element is fern for furniture. And so here we have a fern document. And as we might have a table or love seat or chair, we have a table element here in our furniture collection, only instead of rows and data cells, we list the material the table is made of, the number of legs it has, and what size it is. And we can think of any number of other elements that might go into a furniture collection document for a table. So the question is, what would we do if we wanted to combine these different document types and we wanted to use both an HTML table and a furniture collection table and we don't want to confuse whatever program we're working with? This is where namespaces come in. And to understand namespaces a little better, let's take a look at how they're formatted. Namespaces are declared in the same format as web addresses, but they are not locations. A web address is like what you see at the top of your browser window, and you may know that this is called a URL, or Uniform Resource Locator. Actually, according to the World Wide Web Consortium who came up with this, they haven't called it a URL in a long time. They now refer to it as a URI, or Uniform Resource Indicator. Now let's take a look at the typical URI here, right? HTTP colon slash slash www.educator.com, that's the domain. And then computer science is a subfolder, XML is a subfolder of that, and Anderson is a subfolder of that. And this is where we would find the files related to this lecture. The syntax is borrowed from the Unix file system where the double slash indicates the server and subsequent slashes indicate subdirectories. And it's used by the World Wide Web Consortium, not just for the location of files, but also for the organization of ideas. If we look at this URL again, we can see that Anderson could be considered part of the XML category of lectures, which is part of the computer science category of lectures, which is all part of what educator.com is doing. 
So it's a way of organizing ideas in addition to a way of locating a file in a directory system. So if we get away from the idea that this is a location for something and realize that it's a way of grouping ideas together, it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on with XML namespaces.